teacher emeritus. Welcome to Module 3 of STEM Research 9 and 10, Evaluating Sources from the Internet. In the modern world that we live in, information comes flooding at you from every direction. Sometimes, it is crucial to know what to believe or who can you trust. Think of credibility as a sliding scale at one end are resources that are unreliable. On the other side of the scale are the resources from people with credentials. Now, let's find out the credibility of your key sources. Trap method is a useful way to remember the criteria. Trap method stands for T for timeliness, R for relevance, A for authority, P for purpose. Each letter represents a particular way of questioning the information you find in a book, in a newspaper, or on the web. When evaluating timeliness, ask yourself, is this information recent enough to be relevant to my topic? Where an article from 1960 might be relevant about U.S. history, it will not be current enough to talk about tr current trends in medicine. Make sure that your information is as current as possible. When evaluating reliability, we have to take a critical look at what kind of information is presented in an article. Are there pictures, eyewitness accounts, scientific data, survey findings, or quotes from primary source documents? Is the information presented reliable and factual? When we examine authorship, we look to see who created the article and do they have any credentials that make them a particularly good reporter or an authority on the subject? What company published the information, and do they have any motivations that might lead to the article being biased in any way? This is an important step in research. When we question the purpose of an article, we're looking at the content of the piece. Is it designed to persuade, to inform, or entertain us? Is someone trying to sell us something or convince us of something in a sneaky, underhanded way? Context clues are key for determining purpose in an article. So there you have it. Timeliness, reliability, authorship, and purpose. Using the TRAP method is a great way to evaluate the credibility of a source. However, as a responsible researcher, make sure to seek out a second source to verify the truth of your information. Even credible sources can make mistakes. Have a question about determining source credibility or need help on a research project? When you use high quality sources to back up your points, you demonstrate your own credibility as a writer, thereby contributing to the overall effectiveness of your argument. The best quality research builds on other high quality research. This is true of both your own work and the work of professional researchers. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to find background information for your research paper. 
Mostly we'll be talking about online resources, but you can also use textbooks, like your high school textbooks and stuff like that. But textbooks are not original research papers. When you write a research paper, you need to make sure that your idea is new and you need to connect it to other research in the field. So you need to read previous research before you do your own experiment. Also, reading other research papers will help you to learn the vocabulary and the style of scientific writing. These days, it's pretty easy to find lots of previous research on the internet. So let's do that. Okay, just for example, let's say I'm going to do research about yawning. Now I'm interested in why when one person yawns, other people yawn too. So let's go to Google and search for yawning. Now you can see that I got a, a Wikipedia page and a newspaper article, um, another newspaper article, some kind of encyclopedia, and uh, other things like this. Well, let's take a look at this one, How Stuff Works website. And what I have here is what makes us yawn, and here is a uh, uh, web page here with some good information about um, yawning. And this can be useful for getting background information for your research, but this is not an actual scientific research paper. This is not primary research. Everything in this article comes from some other research. So we want to find the original research papers to be the sources of the information for our research. So what we're going to do is go to the website called Google Scholar. And the difference between Google Scholar and regular Google is that Google Scholar will only find research papers rather than regular websites or newspapers or other things like that. So the first thing we want to do before we search is we want to make sure we don't check this box to include patents because patents are not useful for what we're doing. Okay, so now let's search for yawning. Okay, all of these results are research papers that include the term yawning. This one uses the term contagious yawning. Now this is, uh, some of these are not what we're looking for, but this one is definitely connected to what we're looking for. Contagious yawning is when one person yawns and then other people yawn at this, uh, right after that. Now you can see the uh, basic information. Here's the title of the research paper. Here's the name of one of the authors and the, the year. You can see all the years are listed here. If we're interested in this paper, then we can just click on that. And now here I am at the website for this research paper. And the first thing I want to do is to read the abstract. The abstract is a short paragraph that explains about this research. And then if I read that and I think, oh, this paper is useful, then I need to look around somewhere for a link to download the PDF version of the research. Now over here, it's here. It says full text PDF. So I can click on this and then get the PDF file. Now, be careful. You have to do this. You have to download these PDFs on campus. If you try to do this at home, most of the time, in this case, it's free, but most of the time, you'll have to pay for it. Don't pay for these things. Now, once you get the, uh, here's the paper, once you get the PDF, then you can download it. And, uh, okay, and then here I am, here's the paper. Contagious Yawning in Chimpanzees, and uh, there it is. I can read it and uh, get all the information I need. Another step to find more information about your research is when you have a paper like this, go to the end of the paper. The last part of the paper is the list of references, which is this. And the list of references will give you other research papers that came before this research paper. Now let's just take an example. Let me uh, look at this paragraph here. And you'll see that there's a section here that says this. Children aged younger than five years do not show this contagious yawning effect. And then here's the citation. Anderson and Menno, 2003. This information comes from this research paper. And how do we find that research paper? come to the reference list, look, Anderson is A. Anderson Menno, 2003. Here it is. This is the original research paper. Now if we want to find that, we just come back to Google Scholar and put that information right in here. So I can search for like Anderson Menno, Psychological Influences on Yawning in Children, and here it is. And then I can click on that, 
and I can go right to the website, find the paper, here's the abstract, and uh, somewhere, yep, here's the download link, okay, PDF. Okay, another good technique to use is um, when you find the research paper you're interested in Google Scholar, then down below it you'll see this link that says Cited by 145. And what that means is that 145 papers came after this paper, but mention this paper somewhere in them. They're in that paper's reference list. So we can click on this, and then we can get more information uh, related to our topic. Next, probably the most difficult and important thing when you're using Google Scholar is to refine your search. Sometimes you have to use different combinations of keywords, and maybe the first time you search you won't find anything good. Like here I found a lot of papers that were not connected to my research. So I could improve this by adding another keyword. Instead of just yawning, I'm going to search for contagious yawning. There, now I'm finding a lot more things that look like they're connected to my research. Um, you see here that I have 18,000 results. One way that I can even improve this more is I could put quotes around this. Contagious yawning. Now this is going to force me to find, force Google to find this exact phrase. And you'll see now I'm down to 800 results. If we go back to the uh, Contagious Yawning Chimpanzees paper, you'll see that um, one of the authors is this guy, Tetsuro Matsuzawa. So we could also add information like this, uh, author Matsuzawa. Okay, and now I'm down to 10 results. These are all papers about contagious yawning by this author. And you'll see his name is listed everywhere. This one has the word empathy in the title. If I wanted to refine it, I could also put in title empathy. Now I'm down to two results. Another thing you can do is use plus and minus. For example, I can use plus to mean I want the phrase contagious yawning and it must also include the word dogs. I can also use minus if I don't want chimpanzees, for example. I can search like this and I'll get contagious yawning without chimpanzees. Okay, let's go back to my original regular Google search here and let's talk about Wikipedia. So here's the first page about yawning and Wikipedia. Now you can use Wikipedia as a good start, but you should never cite Wikipedia in your paper. It's not considered to be reliable enough, and it's all based on other research anyways. Now the good thing is that Wikipedia contains citations. That's what these little numbers are. And at the bottom of the Wikipedia page, they have the list of all the citations, the references. So if you find something interesting, like um, say this quote here, approximately 20 physiological reasons for yawning have been proposed. That comes from source number two. If I click on that, you'll see here it is. Anderson, James, Menno, Pauline, psychological influences on yawning in children. That's the same paper that we talked about before. I can just click on that and I'll be right back at that same paper again. Here it is. Okay, lastly, um, Let's talk about this website, Science Daily. I'll just search for Science Daily. This website's quite useful. Again, it's not going to give you research papers directly. It's just going to give you kind of general information. So let me search for yawning. And you can refine your search here by putting the times and things like that in it. But down here, it's going to give you a list of stories. This one, as chimpanzees grow, so does yawn contagion, 2003. So I can click on this. And this gives me a very short explanation of the research paper, which I can read and it's probably pretty easy to understand. But once you read that, then you should come down here to where it says journal reference. And here is the journal reference for the paper. Usually there's a link and you can click on that. And here you are at this uh, another research paper about chimpanzees. Here's the abstract, over here is the download PDF link. Okay, finally, to review, Use Google Scholar to find research papers. Think carefully about the key words you use for your search. Use operators, like the plus and minus, to refine your search. 
Use the Cited By link in Google Scholar to get connections to more papers. Um, read the abstract first and then download the PDF and make sure you do it on campus so it's free. Use the reference list at the end of papers that you read. And finally, use Wikipedia or Science Daily to find links to the original research papers.